Are you ready to impress your family and friends with this Chinese dish? I'll teach you how to make Chinese steamed rice cake just like the Manapua man. Fire up your steamers and let's get cooking! Aloha mai kako, my name is Rel and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite Hawaiian and local recipes. And I got a good one today, better than the Manapua man, we're gonna make some rice cakes. Now, as a kid, rice cake was one of my favorite things to get from the Chinese restaurants. And I decided, well, let's just make them at home so my kids can have them and I can enjoy them whenever I want. And it's really simple. First, you're gonna get some yeast. This is active dry yeast. You're gonna get some warm water and you're gonna go ahead and put the yeast into the water. If you have instant yeast, you can still do this step or you can skip it up to you. But I find that I like the active dry better. And then all you're gonna do is set that aside and let it proof. And while that's going, we're gonna make a simple syrup. So you'll need some water into a small pot and some granulated sugar. And really this step is just to get the sugar to dissolve into the water. So you're just gonna let it go so you can no longer see the sugar. While that's going, we'll go ahead and get a large bowl and some rice flour, just rice flour. You can't use regular flour, not mochiko flour. Mochiko is a sweet glutinous rice flour. This is plain rice flour. No exceptions for this one, sorry. And you're gonna go ahead and set that in. And once most of the sugar has melted, not melted, dissolved is the correct word. You don't wanna get it too hot because the yeast only can handle so much, right? So once that dissolves, then we'll go ahead and pour that into our rice flour. And then you'll just wanna mix that the batter will be really thin. Don't worry, you'll think like, oh my goodness, how is this gonna work? That's what it's supposed to look like. So it'll look like this. And then you're gonna let this cool slightly. It needs to be less than 115, 115 Fahrenheit before you put the yeast in. You don't wanna kill the yeast. So we'll let this cool a little and we'll let the yeast bloom a little bit more and then we'll be right back. All right, so it's cooled down less than 115. Remember, if it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. So the yeast has dissolved, it's bubbled up. I kind of mixed it, so it deflated the bubbles. I should have waited. But anyway, you're gonna go ahead and pour that yeast mixture in. So the sugar and the water and all of that will feed the yeast and it'll bloom. It won't rise per se like bread, but it'll definitely get a lot of bubbles. If you live in a warm environment, you can probably leave this out. If you live in a cold environment, I would say what I like to do is I microwave a cup of water for like a minute and then leave that warm cup of water in the microwave, put the bowl in the microwave and don't turn it on. You just shut the door and leave it in there. So you'll leave it for an hour, hour and a half if you live in a cold place. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get to that point. Stick around. All right, the batter has been proofing for a little over an hour. So let me get that. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's all these bubbles at the top. It's still super liquidy, but the bubbles at the top tell us that it's ready, right? You can either use a six inch or an eight inch. A nine inch, it's too thin, I find. I like the six inch because it makes it a little bit thicker. If you want it a little thinner, then you can use um, the eight inch. You'll spray some ni nine <laughs> non-stick cooking spray, and then we're gonna just pour it straight in like this. And you wanna make sure to get all of that on the bottom. And now time to steam. I know most people don't have bamboo steamers like this. This is a great way to do it. And honestly, it's not that expensive online. I'll link the one I have in the description box below if you wanna check it out. But the great thing about it is the water doesn't condense and drip into the rice cake. So you can put it straight in, which is actually what we're gonna do. So a pot of water, you're gonna bring it up to a boil and then you're gonna drop it down. So you don't want it like full blown boil. It's gonna overcook. You're gonna put this right in the center like that and you'll put it over. Now, if you do not have a bamboo steamer, don't you worry, you can still make this recipe. You'll use a wider based pot and you can use a steamer basket. If you don't have a steamer basket, don't worry either. You can take some foil, roll it up into two logs like this and sit it on top and pour the water in. You'll just have to monitor the water. So you want the foil a logs a little bit higher so it sits, so it's lifted up out of the water, yeah? And then you'll put a cover. Because the bamboo 
the water doesn't condense on it. If you do have a regular steamer, you're gonna wanna put a kitchen towel. Do you like this one? It's a keeping it real one. If you wanna get one for yourself, you can click the link in the description box below. I've got hoodies and some other things over there too. But anyway, you'll take the kitchen towel and then you'll put your cover over it and kind of just wrap it like this. And then either you can put a rubber band or a clip or something on it so that this will catch all the water and it won't condense and drop onto it. Okay, that's what you'll do if you have a regular steamer. We'll let that go 18, 20 minutes or so. If you could, might have to go a little bit longer, but we'll check it at about 18, okay? We'll be right back. Alrighty, let's take a look. It's hot, so use a towel, you know. Ta -da! You'll let it sit for a little bit so it can settle, and then <laughs> it's hot. Usually I let it cool and then I take it out. So you're gonna run the knife along the side of the pan just to kind of loosen it a little, like so. And then what I would recommend is just put this down and put the pan over it, I mean the cutting board over it, and then just grab it like this and flip it. Or you can grab the pan and do it however you want. But that's how I like to do it. Then just give it a little and it pops out like that. This part is flat, the top kind of rolls so it doesn't sit super flat. So the top side is a little lumpy because when it rises and the bottom is nice and flat. So up to you, however you wanna do it, you can leave it like this or flip it over. It is a little stuck to the bottom because I didn't spray the thing, but if you let it cool down, it comes off super easy, but we're gonna cut it. So rice cake, Chinese restaurants, Manapua man. I mean, every time I go, it's one of my favorite, favorite things to get. I know I said that earlier. It's sticking to the knife, that's why it's crumbling. So you, if you wait, <laughs> if you wait for it to cool down, it won't do this as much. I was rushing it. It crumbles and it sticks to the knife when you cut it warm. I wanted to show you what not to do. If you wait for it to cool down and then cut it, you won't get all of this crumbling and sticky. And that's how you make Chinese themed rice cake. Look at that jiggle. If you like Chinese recipes and you wanna see more, then check out this video here. And until next time, ahui ho. Thank you.